Good morning, world. Don't adjust your set. My partner Brian's not here today. He and his family are enjoying their vacation, a long deserved vacation in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So it is just, although it is called Cedric and Brian, it's just Cedric today. And I have a very interesting topic I want to talk to you about. So stay tuned. I'm Cedric. Brian's supposed to be over there. And this is Cedric and Brian. <laughs> guys welcome back uh, like I said or uh, earlier Brian and his family they are in a much deserved vacation um, I have the, uh, the key to the house actually it's not even keys Brian has a code on his uh, door lock that I have access to he's tried to change it a few times I just break the code and I just come in anyway so uh, while I'm now just right in the refrigerator I decided to turn on the camera and spend some time with you guys because you guys are important to me even though Brian doesn't think so he's off gallivanting around the country uh, doing whatever um, real quick I want to talk to you a subject that's been a uh, tapping on my heart for a little bit. If you saw our Tuesday video, I promoted a good friend of mine, uh, Jamie Luce. We'll put her picture up here. Uh, Jamie's been a good friend of mine for 10 years. Uh, she's an incredible blogger, um, now a YouTuber, uh, author, incredible wife, incredible mom. And we start talking about the topic of where have all the men gone? And we did a two part series uh, of that, which the second part of her show is on today. So if you didn't see the first one on Tuesday, on August 3rd, go back and watch that and then check out that second part again today after you watch Cedric and Brian, today on August 6th. But anyway, that's, that's a question that's been pressing us for a lot of years now. Where have all the men gone? Our country's done an incredible job of minimizing the man's role in our country, um, in our communities, in our homes, and it's had a very drastic effect on, on our lives. Um, and I, I, I pulled some things off the internet because the first question is, what is a man? And I pulled up some generic definitions here off the internet, so that should be interesting. And this first one says, a good man is secure and confident, but not arrogant. That means he treats everyone with respect until they give him a reason not to. He knows that giving respect and agreement are not the same, and the key to treat people with kindness, humility, and grace. That's one definition. Another definition says, a real man is a man with genuine self-confidence and true masculinity. He's a man who knows his own mind and knows what he's about in life. And he's not afraid to stand up for what he believes in. A real man has the strength of character to be his own man in the world and to always be true to himself. And thirdly, no real definition will be a real definition unless you go to Urban Dictionary. A real man is what you young folk might call old fashioned. Chivalry is not dead. A real man has manners, is polite and considerate. He is honest and open and true to himself. He will fight for and defend the people that he loves. He is hardworking. He is not spiteful. He respects women and shows appreciation for all of his blessings. A man, a real man is the provider of the family. He is strong physically and mentally, and he is never too proud to exhibit strong emotion. Once committed, he is faithful to only her. He does not watch porn or disres disrespect her in any way. He helps with housework. Good Lord. He helps with housework and is a role model for his children. A real man knows who he is, what he wants, and is grateful for what he has. Now, as you see, if you look up, and here's the thing, you guys have been on the internet. Brian and I did an episode about that a while ago. If you look up certain things on any search engine, you're going to get a million different entries. And so the question still beholds, what is a man? And it's confusing because depending, if you ask 100 people what a man is, chances are you're gonna get 100 different answers. At the end of my little talk today, I will give you my definition of what a man is and what a man strives to be. But uh, one guy that I love watching is uh, Jason Whitlock. If you don't know who he is, he used to be a sports guy on uh, ESPN and has since broken away from uh, that, that woke uh, station and uh, branched out on his own. And he has his own station. And about two weeks ago, uh, he had a gentleman on by the name of Bobby Harrington. And I was watching that episode, and Bobby shared a good acronym for what a real man is. And what he says is a real man is, the R stands for, he rejects passivity. Um, that struck a chord with me because in today's culture, we're told that men are too masculine and that men should be more passive. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with a man 
being being gentle at times, but I think we need that man who is wild at heart. And I think that starts in our school systems and the schools are basically catered toward young girls. Correct me if I'm wrong, but for those of you who have young boys in your class, boys are always being told to sit down, be quiet, keep your hands to yourself, read quietly. Now, can boys do that? Absolutely. But at, at a core of a man, they're, they're, they're wild at heart, they have to be active, and I used this analogy before, they, they like to play shoot em up, bang, bang. If you give them a plastic gun, you take that away, what does he do? He uses a stick. You take the stick away, what does he do? He, he does this with his fingers. That's what men do. And I think if push came to shove and you're really in trouble and you needed help, I think you will want a real man to come to your rescue. But in today's world, in today's leftist culture, uh, we say that we want to get away with toxic masculinity. And there can be toxic masculinity. Some of you women have, you know, friends or uh, neighbors and maybe yourself, you've gone through a situation where you've been abused, either physically or verbally or both by a man. That is toxic. And like some of these definitions said, yeah, you want a real man who's gonna care for you and be there for you and encourage you and lift you up and edify you. But I think we've done a poor job of placating our boys to the point where we start to medicate them if they act too masculine. So the, the R is rejects passivity. The E is that he expects a great reward for himself. He expects things for himself. If you want to know the, uh, the real biblical definition of that, you have to go watch my podcast with Jamie. You can get more information with that, but I'm going to say he expects a great reward for himself. He expects great things to happen. He goes out and gets it. He wakes up in the morning. He's industrious. Um, he, he sets goals and he goes out there and he works hard and he expects great things to happen, not only for himself, but his family and his community. So the R is for rejects passivity. The E is, is he expects a great reward. The A is, and this one is huge. The A is he accepts responsibility. How many men do you know or young boys who want nothing to do with responsibility? And uh, being in the profession that I've been in for a number of years, being a teacher, I talk to a lot of young men and they think that the, the mark of being a man is when they can finally start doing their own thing. And, I, and I'll, I'll say, did you, did you call your mom and tell you you're doing this? He goes, no, nah, I don't have to call my mom. Or worse, did you call your girlfriend? When you're out with your boys and you say, I got it, let me call my girl. What do the other guys say? Oh, come on, don't be a punk. Are you really gonna just bow down to her and do what she tells you to do? No, you're accepting responsibility and you're being accountable. I think a lot of young men uh, have lost that nowadays is the fact that they can be accountable to someone else without thinking it's a sign of weakness. In reality, being accountable to someone is a sign of strength because before you can become a good leader, you have to be an incredible follower. So you have to be accountable to someone. So the R is rejects passivity. The E is always expect a great reward for yourself. The A is accepts responsibility. And the L is leads courageously. If you're going to be a real man, and we've stopped men from doing this, is that we have to expect them to lead courageously. Brian and I have talked about this numerous times on our podcast. Uh, I can, I'm talking from the, the reference of the black family in the late 60s when the welfare system was introduced. It stopped men from leading, not only courageously, it just stopped them from leading because they no longer had an obligation to the family. Uh, the government came in and said, we will, we, we will give you money to, to live and do what you need to do. Just make sure you don't bring a man in the house. Um, and that's, that, that's really key because I want to talk a little about, about CRT and some of the things that CRT has done to minimize the importance of men in, in our community. It's like they say the traditional family should be neglected. And I think since then they've taken a lot of things off their website, but in the beginning they, they said very clearly they wanted to change the, the modern Western family, which is making sure that the family unit was not together. Why did they do that? Because if you can tell apart a family, which is the cornerstone of our society, then you can tear apart the rest of the world. And so men have kind of taken that and run with it. And sometimes women have pushed them out the door as well. So the men are too masculine. Um, secondly, they say that women should be free from toxic masculinity. And that's true to a certain extent. And we've, uh, if you look at some of the things that we've done today with our movies and our TV shows and our songs, men have become buffoons. They've become idiots. And uh, this, this is uh, near and dear to my heart. It, it breaks my heart to say this, but there's a difference between 
Bill Cosby and uh, Cliff Heathcliff Huxtable from The Cosby Show. And please leave that in the comments. If there has been a, a model husband or father figure since that show went off the air, I haven't seen it yet. That was something that I couldn't wait to get home during the 80s and watch because they, they kind of superseded black and white and they superseded color and it showed what a good family unit could be when the, the husband, when the mom and the dad were there and the children were there and things were normal. But after he left the airwaves, what dads took his place? Al Bundy from uh, uh, Married with Children, uh, the animated uh, Peter Griffin from uh, Family Guy. Did I watch that? Yes, I did. I'm guilty as charged. But all the men since then have kind of followed suit. So when we look at men nowadays, as portrayed in movies and in books and in TVs, they're complete idiots and they're complete buffoons. So young girls and even women who are looking for a man are saying, why do I want one of those? The women are going out and they're the ones that are becoming the CEOs and they're becoming the partners in the law firm. And they're doing all the big things that normally men should do. Now, when Brian and I talked about this, we're not coming from a sexist standpoint of view. By all means, if you're a woman and you're, you're climbing that corporate ladder and you're breaking through the glass ceilings, by all means, you should do that. But I think a lot of women are doing that because they don't see any help on the horizon to help them to help do that and to help raise kids. Um, also, and then the big thing that CRT is teaching is going to be teaching your kids is that any form of marriage is good. Now, this is just my personal opinion. There's only one true form of marriage, and that's between a man and a woman. Um, I may get some some scathing comments in the comments section, but when a man and woman come together, that lends itself to reproduction. Any other form of that, you can't reproduce and the society dies out. Um, next weekend, I am going to my son's engagement party to his uh, lovely fiance now, I stopped saying girlfriend, uh, to his lovely fiance, they've been dating for three years. And um, he's excited about the prospect of giving me a grandson. Uh, Brian and I talked about this, and it's something that I haven't verbally said to a lot of people, but my son is the last in my line. Um, none of my male cousins had any boys, or anything like that. So if he doesn't produce a male, my last name dies with that. And I thought, well, is that kind of antiquated, kind of caveman like to think that way? And I said, but, but I think about that. I'm thinking I want my, my lineage to continue because I have things still to teach my son and to hopefully to teach my prospective grandson. Does that mean I'm not gonna teach it to my granddaughters if I had them? Absolutely not. I'm gonna teach them the same way, but let's be real, this isn't being mean. You can't reproduce without having a male and a female. So I guess to uh, kind of summarize this up, again, my, the question bears repeating, where have all the real men gone? If we're not careful, we are pushing them out. We've, we've kind of said, we don't need you anymore. We don't respect you. And we've changed the definition of what a real man is. Um, just over the past weekend, my, my girlfriend and I were out in Palm Springs for a little getaway. And as we were walking down the street, I make it a point to walk on the street side when I'm with her. Now, originally we were, we were talking with a bunch of other couples that we were with. Nowadays, it's for safety reasons. You know, you never know who's gonna come from the street side to, to do something or a car coming. Back in the olden days, in the Western days, it was simply done for the horse and buggy era so that dust wouldn't get on the beautiful gown that she was wearing. So the guy would walk on the street side to do that. Um, but now women are, they're, they're, they're taking the lead. Uh, we, we talked about little things going out to eat and I like to sit in an area where I can, I can see the door, uh, having my back to the corner so I can see what's going on and uh, just making sure she's, she's protected. Not that she can't, protect herself, but she shouldn't have to when she's with me, the onus of that should fall upon me. And again, through what's going on in our world today, through media, through TV, through books, we are telling women, you don't need a man. Uh, you can go out and do your own thing. You can, you can be your man and your woman. Uh, I've talked to a lot of single moms who uh, really get offended by uh, Father's Day when someone will give them a card and say, happy, happy Father's Day to you. I have a good friend, uh, she said it, it, it just, it bugs her because she knows she's a woman. She knows she goes, I am a mother. I can't be a father and I'm not playing both roles. Unfortunately, there isn't a man in the house for to, uh, to teach my son or teach my daughter certain things that only he can teach her, but I have no choice. So if you do that and talk to, talk to your single female friends if they're in that situation and tell them if they, uh, 
if they take that as a compliment, most of them don't. But when you when you look at them and say, "Hey, Happy Father's Day," you're you're both. They're, they're not. That's not the way it was designed. Um, and like and like you do anything in life, you gotta look for a role model. You gotta look to who you can emulate. Uh, for me, my my dad was has always been around. If you heard my story at all, my uh, my uh, dad thought about leaving my mom. I was the reason my dad and mom got married. Even though I was first, I was a mistake. But uh, he hung around and he said he wanted to instill some some things in me, some uh, some beliefs and some morals and some ethics. And he did an incredible job of that. And although he couldn't do it all, I made the conscious choice of surrounding myself with people in my life and seeking out different men in different areas who I wanted to be like and who I wanted to emulate. Man, you know what I'm talking about. I, I grew up playing basketball, a diehard Laker fan. And when I was out in the, the the yard playing basketball and I was doing the five, four, three, two, and then the last second shot, I was never me. I wanted to be Magic Johnson, but I knew I was never going to be six nine. So I was always Isaiah Thomas from the Detroit Pistons. But I, I saw people that I wanted to emulate and I tried to do that. The same thing goes with manhood. Um, if you're a, a single father or if you grew up and you didn't have a dad, find those men in your community who you say, and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's what we all do. It's nothing wrong with looking at someone and saying, you know what, they have some skills, they have some abilities, they have some attributes that I want to adopt for myself. In this case, it's okay, steal them. If you see a man and he's walking down the street holding hands with his girlfriend or his wife, steal that. You see a man who's pulling out a chair for his wife, take that. If the job you're working right now just isn't doing it and it sucks, you may have to get two. And, that, and that's okay, you gotta do what you gotta do. And, but don't let society tell you like, you know, kick back. Um, I talked to so many women today who, who are with men who are in their 30s and 40s, who say they do nothing but come home from wherever they are and play video games a day. You know, like, like it says in a good book, when I was a child, I thought like a child and I acted like a child and I spoke like a child. But when I became a man, I had to put away childish ways. Am I saying never go out and have fun? Yeah, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time to work and be industrious, and there's a time to have fun, but I think we've tipped the scales too much where men are so focused on having fun that they completely connect their, their job as men and responsibility. Um, Brian and I don't talk about a lot on, and I don't talk a lot on this show, but my ideal barometer for a man is, is Jesus in the Bible. Why do I pick him? Because if I were to pick any other man, um, I guess my second favorite guy is Abraham Lincoln. I love Abraham Lincoln. But that's, a, that's an easier barometer to hit. And that, I think when we do that, we compare ourselves to other people, we always pick the, the lowest common denominator and say, well, I'm not so bad, I'm not like him. And that's why comparing yourself to other men is a hard thing to do. I know I'll never reach that plateau of being like Jesus, and that's a good thing because it always gives me something to strive for. But anyway, these are just uh, some of my thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Uh, what was that good, that old book a long time ago, Tuesdays with Maury? This is uh, you know, Sit Down with Cedric. I have to change the S to a C, Sit Down with Cedric. But anyway, you get the point. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. I just want to share from my heart a little bit and uh, speak to you um, candidly about where I have all the men gone. Uh, because this current administration, without getting too political, is doing an incredible job. Of, they're trying to do an incredible job of getting rid of the men. And we can't allow that. Um, our, our four, uh, our, the father is important. That's what we had our forefathers um, and our founding fathers. And our founding fathers put together certain things that they wanted this family, this American family, and we're all the children, no matter what your color is, to do things to protect our home which is the United States of America. And we can't let that go. Men, now is the time to stand up. Um, neither Brian or I were any part of the military. Um, so those who did that and you women, uh, kudos to you, our hats are off to you. We thank you for that. And so Brian, I thought this little YouTube channel is kind of our way of giving back and showing that men can stand up for what's right and not kowtow uh, to the left and, uh, and, and, and just back away from what is right. but stand up. Um, so we hope you guys appreciate that, what we're trying to do. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell, and share our videos with everyone you know. And please let Brian know in the comment section how, 
how it was just poor form to leave me here all by myself. <laughs> so now I'm going to go downstairs and raid the refrigerator because he left me here. So I think I'm entitled to that. I use the word entitled. What am I thinking? I didn't mean to say that. But anyway, like, subscribe, ring the bell, share our videos with everyone you know. And uh, I am looking forward to my friend coming back. Until next time, I'm Cedric. Brian would be over there. <laughs>